I have no idea where I'm at right now. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel, Ali Sherry here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is it like to own a drone in Canada? I am currently hiking. I may be lost at the moment, but uh, trying to figure it out. But yeah, today's video will be going over what exactly is it like to own a drone and operate a drone in Canada. I believe in the month of June 2019, Transport Canada released a bunch of new drone regulations and laws that essentially basically made it impossible for anyone to fly a drone that's over 250 grams. From my understanding, for people in the US, what you need to get is your FAA Part 107 license. Essentially, that's almost equivalent to the advanced RPAS. Uh, drone operator license for Canadian citizens. Uh, but nonetheless, Transport Canada has basically made it impossible for anyone to fly or operate a drone outside of your own property uh, without having a license. And I'm gonna share basically my experience in terms of what I did to study for it. I am now a fully certified advanced RPAS pilot. Uh, like I mentioned, I use a lot of drone work for not just my commercial use, but also for my own personal usage as well. And I'm gonna kind of go over the pros and cons in terms of what my experience was like in terms of trying to basically get fully certified. When it comes to becoming a fully certified pilot, guys, there's basically two, there's two options you can choose from if you're in Canada. The first option is that you can become a basic operator, which is a pretty easy to get. You just need to basically study and take the basic online exam. And then the other one is your advanced uh, RPAS operator or your advanced drone operator. This one's a little bit more difficult as there's a lot more extensive studying that you need to do. And you also have to do a in-person in flight test to basically showcase that you're competent uh, in terms of your actual knowledge and skill set. Uh, and also obviously your ability to fly. I'm currently trying to find a field right now. I think Google Maps might be throwing me off just a bit, but I'm pretty sure I see it. So I'm gonna go over what exactly I did to become a fully certified advanced drone operator. Uh, again, guys, the cool thing with this license is that it really gives you a lot more freedom in terms of being able to operate within uncontrolled and also controlled airspace, but I'm gonna get into the little details of that a little bit later. All right, I think I found the field that I want to uh, take off from. This pissed me off. Oh. Finally speak without my hand hitting this. That, that feels great. All right, guys. So basically, when it comes to becoming a fully advanced uh, certified drone operator in Canada, there's about there's five steps that you need to go through to do just that. Step number one, you need to basically register your drone with Transport Canada. I believe that costs about five bucks. Uh, you need to put your legal name, your address, stuff like that, and then you basically need to take the uh, the registration number and put it on your actual drone. Step number two, you need to basically pass your basic uh, exam online. It costs ten bucks to do that. Step number three, guys, you basically need to take your advanced exam online. I believe this costs about 10 bucks per attempt. And then step number four, you need to take an in-person flight review exam where you basically need to show up to a uh, flight reviewer or flight review school uh, and essentially showcase to a flight reviewer that you're able to fly in a safe and legal manner. And then step number five, once you've passed everything, uh, everything that I've mentioned previously, you then apply to uh, Transport Canada for your advanced operations exam. And I believe that costs about uh, 25 bucks. Once you've completed all five steps, now you're a fully certified pilot in Canada. Just recently received my advanced RPAS uh, full certification as a drone operator. I'm going to share my experience with the actual process of becoming a fully certified advanced drone operator in Canada. So with step number one, guys, you basically need to register your drone with Transport Canada. I think it costs about 10 bucks to do so. It's pretty easy. All you need to do is you need to basically put your legal name uh, and put your address and essentially take the actual uh, registration number and stick it onto your drone. Uh, I basically printed it out and I basically uh, super glued it uh, to my drone. All right, guys, so once you register your drone, the second step is to pass your basic exam online. I believe you need a 65% mark to pass. Uh, I didn't find this part too, too difficult. Uh, I think I spent like two days in total studying for it. Uh, again, I just basically used the CFS and the AIM document uh, with some basic Google and YouTube searching. And my overall experience with the basic exam, it wasn't too, too difficult. Uh, I think I passed it on my first attempt. Uh, once you basically pass your basic exam, now you need to take your advanced exam online, which is gonna cost you another 10 bucks per attempt. Uh, this exam was night and day difference compared to the basic exam. The advanced exam was was a lot more difficult than I anticipated. Uh, I think I studied about two weeks uh, for it. And I did this through basically studying the CFS, the AIM document, uh, a bunch of uh, Transport Canada rules and regulations around drone operators and drone operations. Uh, and then I also did a lot of Google searching and YouTube searching around aircraft terminology and even aircraft physics, uh, because all that is actually incorporated within the advanced exam. My, my advice, guys, is that when you're taking the advanced exam online, uh, you really want to do your due diligence to really study these different documents. And I'm probably going to add a bunch of links uh, below to kind of further help you out. Uh, it's going to give you a bit of direction in terms of what you need to study. Uh, the one thing I did kind of find frustrating is that the exam is extremely cumulative and 
it's they don't really give you much di direction in terms of what you need to study and what you what like like what specific areas you need to study it's kind of like you you pretty much kind of have to know everything uh, from aircraft terminology airspace assessment being able to read weather reports and type of uh, matars being able to read a, a cfs chart a kind of flight supplementation chart and a bunch of other type of different pilot terminology and aircraft terminology and stuff like that so the advanced exam is is, is actually very very uh, heavy from a knowledge perspective it took me four tries to pass it uh, I actually, funny enough, know, know a buddy of mine who, who, who tried taking this exam 15 times and he passed his 16th exam. So it is very, very heavy from a knowledge perspective and I would very much suggest spending at least two weeks studying for this exam before you attempt it online. And again, it costs about 10 bucks uh, online to, to take it and you need a minimum grade of 80% uh, to pass. Once you pass your advanced exam online, the next step is you need to basically book a flight review. This is where you're gonna, you're gonna show up to a flight reviewer or a flight review school and you're basically gonna have to showcase to somebody that you uh, have the ability to fly in a safe and regulated manner. This is quite a bit of a price increase. I think on average it costs about 200 or $400 Canadian to uh, book a flight review. Uh, I personally found this exam to be a little bit more easier than the advanced exam because it was not as much of an emphasis on the knowledge, but more so on your actual ability to fly. My advice when it comes to studying for the flight review guys is basically try to practice uh, as much as you can in areas that, that are suitable, such as your backyard and such, uh, and essentially go over some of the basic knowledge requirements in terms of uh, what you can do legally in, in Canada and essentially what type of rules and regulations that are directly uh, applied to drone operators. Once you pass your flight review guys, the last and fifth final step is to basically apply to, for your advanced operations license on Transport Canada's website and I believe that costs about 25 bucks. Once you've done that guys, you're now a fully certified drone operator that can legally fly in Canada. Uh, there's still going to be some restrictions in place but like I mentioned earlier on in the video, you're going to have a lot more freedom in terms of where you can fly and the different type of operations that you can do. And again, from my personal experience guys, I tend to use drones a lot in my own commercial use and also personal use and for me it was a no-brainer. So now I'm going to basically address the question that I think everybody has on their mind is that is it worth going through all this hassle to get your advanced operations license in Canada to be able to fly a drone. And my short answer to that today is it really depends. If you're just a, if you're a person who basically uses drones here and there, I personally wouldn't recommend it because the amount of time, effort, and money that you need to put into it is quite substantial. If you fly kind of here and there and you don't really, and, and drones are not really that big in terms of your production or your, or your own personal usage, I personally wouldn't really recommend it. Now, in the instance that you use drones quite a lot, uh, for me, it's a no-brainer. And again, guys, the main reason you want to get this is to basically showcase that uh, you're a professional in your field, you know what you're doing, you're, you're going to limit the amount of risk and safety to others as much as you can, and while also being able to fly in a safe manner without being worried of being fined about 1000 up to $5,000. I know that when I'm flying my drone, the last thing I want to think about is basically any type of uh, penalties that I can experience uh, when I'm flying, because my main uh, goal is to not crash my drone. <laughs> so. Uh, that's pretty much it guys let's jump into a bunch of b-roll of me flying the drone I've, like i said i finally got to the uh, field that i've been hiking towards and uh yeah let's have some fun